at LSU and do as most as much as I can at LSU. So I'm chilling. But I think that should put like the WNBA on notice for real. For like, sure. Y'all got to start getting right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like we in, we in college right now. We getting chartered flights, free food, all of this, right? Charter flights. We getting paid. We got NIL now. It's like, give me something to want to, you know what I'm saying? Wanna like, go. You know what I I'm think y'all going to be the generation to change the WNBA. For sure. The WNBA better get right. Flaw J tried to warn them, and they still aren't getting right. Fumbling potential expansion candidates left and right. But that's a story for another day. Paige Becker's pretty much soft confirmed that she's staying at UConn for at least another year. Obviously, we won't know until she officially declares she's not entering the draft. But let's just look at what she said real quick. Her exact words were, It's not about teams in the draft. Who's got what pick? It's all about me loving playing here. Me loving my teammates. And wanting to get more experiences and more time with them. And more time in the program. And so that's, I think, the deciding factor. Just wanting to be here longer and not anything necessarily that's already picked and chosen in the draft. This is the closest you can get to say you're not enrolling in the draft without saying it. I absolutely believe the community at UConn and her teammates are a big factor in why she might stay. But let's keep it real. We all know what's really going on. Money talks. There's a reason I played that clip at the beginning. Angel Reese and Flaw J ain't the only ones thinking that. If a bunch of star players like Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, Angel Reese, Cameron Brink stay an extra year, all the people trashing Michael Wilbon and other people pointing out the economics of college versus the WNBA owe them an apology. There's a good chance Caitlin Clark will stay in college another year, and there will be a bunch of flowery articles of how she's doing it to help the community of Iowa and how much she loves the fans, and there's truth to that. But come on, let's be serious. It's not a secret women basketball players are making way more money, have better facilities, and get more coverage in college. Some people like Tamari Key and Corey Close kept it real. They know they are taking a risk by saying how they feel, but they do it anyway. I love when people do this. But here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with it. I would do the same thing. The people watching this video would too. There's nothing wrong with athletes getting what they are worth, because the way the WNBA is currently set up, they can't do that. The argument that they can go to the WNBA because their endorsements will follow them is fallacy. Because it ignores the fact the WNBA isn't helping grow their brands. It's the other way around if you're Caitlin Clark, Angel, and Paige. They are growing the WNBA. One side is getting way more out of the exchange than the other. That also doesn't account for the fact many NIL deals are local or directly tied to the school. Caitlin Clark can literally go up to the Iowa boosters and be like, I need an X amount of dollars or I'm going to the Indiana Fever, and you best believe they would do it. The economic value she brought to the city of Iowa and the university is like Coach Prime in Colorado. Iowa will crumb up any local NIL deal imaginable to convince Caitlin to stay an extra year. They need her. But let's circle back to Paige and UConn since this is what this video is about. UConn gets more attendance than every WNBA team. They get more viewership than the WNBA. In the WNBA, the media talks about you for a good three months. In college, you get talked about almost year-round. Paige was out for almost two years, and they still made her the focus of many topics. I hate saying this because I badly want to see her in the WNBA, but quite honestly, Paige Becker's going to the WNBA helps the WNBA way more than it helps her. They badly want her star power along with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. But what does Paige get out of that? It's not like the WNBA is giving her a revenue share. The salary the WNBA is giving her is not even a drop in the bucket of the value she provides to them. As much as I want to see players like Paige Beckers play in the WNBA, I think this needs to happen. They've been treating the younger WNBA players like garbage. They've been cutting them left and right and had no remorse doing it. If a draft pick doesn't give them instant results, they have no problem throwing them in the trash for an older player. And a lot of times those older players aren't doing much better. But Max, it's because there's only 144 spots. They should have just got good, and that's exactly the problem. They won't add more, and they always come up with excuses why they can't. Now they have to deal with the top players they actually want not going right away, and there's no guarantee the teams with the top picks right now will be able to get them next year. In a way, it's karma. But what does this mean for Paige Beckers if she stays? UConn fans will be extremely happy. I think next year, if UConn can be healthy, which is a big ask, so let's just say mostly healthy. I think they will have a final four caliber team and potentially win a national championship. 
Their freshmen have been really good, and they will be sophomores next year. Losing Aaliyah Edwards would be tough, but they can potentially get Sarah Strong to replace her. Ali Zebel is someone I think can contribute day one. Hopefully Jana El Alfie and AZ Fudd can come back fully healthy and contribute as well. In terms of individual awards, obviously Paige won't have an issue stacking those up. That's it for this video. I've been thinking about doing more WNBA videos, so let me know if you guys would want to see them. Thanks for watching.